Good morning, all of you. In today's session, we are going to start with the 10th standard chemistry and physics, where unit number seven, classification of elements, the periodic table is going to be discussed. In this, we are going to start with series number one. It is not possible to record the entire uh, unit in the single session. That's why it was made into different uh, fragments. Each segment consists of a certain quantity of the uh, lesson what we are going to discuss right so apart from this earlier we completed unit one to six entire detailed explanation of all these uh, chapters available on the channel called the world of computative chemistry in addition to that we entered into this unit seven classification of elements and the periodic table let us go and discuss about series number one of this one periodic properties Right. So when we go with the introduction, what is the need for this periodic properties and why we have to classify all the elements? So in order to get that, first of all, let us take the example medical shop. When you go to medical shop for uh, any certain medicine, so, so many medicines are located in that shop. So, it is very difficult to locate. So, what is your question? You are going to ask for a fever tablet, otherwise a pain relieving agent, whatever you want to do. So, within a fraction of a second, that shop person will bring you whatever you want. In spite of a large quantity or large number of various medicines are present, but he able to locate, he able to identify within fraction of seconds, whatever you are expecting for. In the similar manner, if you are uh, going to any supermarket, so in that supermarket, all the groceries available, whatever you want, everything is available in that. And uh, moreover, all are available in the bulk quantity also, right? So they are arranged in certain way. It is very simple to identify where you are, uh, where you are um, wanting to uh, search for the particular item. So it's very simple and convenient to locate that particular item wherever it is present because that is available in certain periodical arrangement. In the similar manner, so whenever you go with elements, elements of all the periodic tables, so in order to identify each and every element, uh, in order to remember the properties of each and element, it is very difficult to task. In order to avoid that kind of ambiguity, again, just like uh, this uh, medical shop, otherwise the supermarket, we are also arranging our elements in a certain manner so that you can identify where the element is there and what are the, its consequent properties. So it, there is a need for this uh, arrangement of all the elements in the certain periodical manner so that it is very convenient to identify. It is convenient to study about those elements in the a particular kind of uh, particular kind of what uh, classical way right so for that purpose we need classification of elements so here we are going to discuss about what is the chronology of periodic properties of elements chronology stands for what how the element classification started and how we are progressing in uh, such a manner and what is the new version of this periodic properties are classification of element that entire uh, history of uh, the history of periodic table classification is going to discuss now where, uh, yes, this is the entire uh, classification of properties of all the elements. First discovered element in the chemistry is a Pasperus. So among all the elements in the periodic table, so here so many elements are well known to us. These are our entire periodic table elements which are arranged in certain manner. It's very uh, simple to identify the individual properties if it is arranged in this manner, right? So initially determined, initially identified element, first uh, identified element in the periodic table is a Pasperus by the scientist called Henning Brand, right? Later, these are uh, further classified into Boyle. So Robert Boyle is the next scientist who made a certain classification. At the time of uh, Robert Boyle, what he felt is uh, this element, whatever element you are taking, for example, you may take hydrogen, you may take oxygen, you may take carbon, whatever. So that kind of element may not be further broken. Breaking of those elements are not possible. Elementary treatise of chemistry. So that is the book was given by this one. 
and the robert boyle uh, used to classify at the time of robert boyle 13 elements are well known to us and uh, those elements are not further broken into any tiny particles element itself it is the tiniest particle further breakage of that element may not be possible right this is a second generation classification move on to third generation classification pile levoisier Levoisier is considered as a father of modern chemistry, who uh, identified uh, oxygen. Discovery of oxygen made by this Levoisier, Levoisier only, and it's a co-scientist Priestley, right? So, Elements Transit of Chemistry was the book written by this Levoisier, and uh, apart from this, so many scientific journal publications also published by this scientist, and so many elements are identified at the time. right so he is the next person who made the classification for the convenient identification of elements well known at the time right so this is a third generation classification and the next generation classification was made by johann uh, wolfgang dobernier dobernier identified uh, certain elements are well known at the time those elements are made into three sets just like in our body also we have dna dna is made up of triplet of amino acid so there is a uh, what a three strand uh, triplet of amino acids are present in the similar manner here also he identified he classified elements in two triplets so this is called dobernier triads right so he made a classification like that where three different three elements are made into one set those three elements are said to be triad so this type of classification made by dobernier so only certain elements are made into this category and uh, we experience some limitations because all the elements not categorized in certain manner where we can't uh, make into triplets it is not possible to make all the elements in such a triplet manner so but it is the th what you can say first second third fourth generation classification made by dobernier Dobernier triads. Three three elements are made into one set, just like our DNA made up of three sets of amino acids. In the similar manner, here also three elements are made into a certain group, right? So after this Dobernier, we have another uh, uh, what a newland actase. So newland classification was given. So just like uh, newland actase. Uh, so what is the use of uh, newland actase means here? right so when you see this uh, newland classification what happens hydrogen lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen in this way the series will be started after the oxygen next coming element element will resembles with the first element this is a kind of system which is purely uh, based on the notes of music how the music having sa re ga ma pa da ni again sa will come that means uh, there is a repetition of the word after certain period in the similar manner when we are moving with a certain elements so repetition of properties are possible in the certain period of time just like uh, uh, how the musical notations are present how they are repeating in certain uh, interval in the similar manner here also Uh, the elements are going to repeat their properties after some interval of time after certain period of time these are said to be newland actaves newland actaves are denoted as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 after seventh element eighth element is exactly similar to first element that's why it is denoted as actave actave is nothing but eighth octa denotes what eighth element in the similar manner first element with eighth Eighth element with the sixteenth, sixteenth with the consequent one. In the similar manner, each time eighth interval, you will get the similar properties. That denotes what hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, cobalt. All these are having resemblance in their properties. In the similar manner, lithium, sodium, potassium, copper. This is also eighth time repetition. That's why all these are also grouped into certain. Uh, certain group because all are resembling in their properties. Uh, likewise, very. Lithium, magnesium, calcium, zinc are also having similar kind of uh, properties in their uh, uh, chemical and physical nature. Boron, aluminium, chromium, yttrium. So in this manner, Newland gave the classification purely based on the notes of music. How the same notation is given after the seventh element? After the seventh note, you will get the eighth note as a just like first one. In the similar manner here also, notations are provided. 
so this is neuron actives and next is about mendeleev mendeleev this is certain kind of scientific classification was started at this time right so scientific classification made by dimitri mendeleev uh, where all the elements of periodic table are arranged according to their increasing atomic mass he considered he considered uh, increasing level of atomic mass for classification of the elements so atomic weight is considered for the classification of elements and at the time he assumed there are certain gaps so at the time uh, all the elements are not well known to us that's the reason why he uh, he framed a certain periodic table where some empty gaps were kept new elements are going to be invented those elements will fit in this so such a kind of uh, futuristic uh, futuristic thought is also there at the time of this mandelieu and uh, whatever new element uh, was introduced that exactly fitting where he left the space vacant sites are present in that site uh, newly invented elements are exactly fitting so he uh, gave after aluminium he kept one empty space for that he uh, assumed as a eka aluminium that means next one Uh, next to aluminium he gave its name as eka aluminium at the time that element was not known so uh, later it it was invented like a silicon and it introduced into that region and exactly fitting what the properties mandelieu expected even though element is not known and he felt that there will be one element and it may contain such a properties after the invention of in the future that element exactly fitted here and having resemblance what properties expected by this mendeleev that is the futuristic vision of the scientist during the classification of elements and it is purely based on atomic mass atomic mass but uh, we have so many limitations based on this atomic mass cla classification so that modern periodic table was framed where all the limitations whatever experienced by all these uh, Uh, different historical classifications all overcome by this modern periodic table right so here the elements of uh, all the uh, all the chemistry and physics are classified according to their electronic configuration so periodic properties are the are mainly because of the electronic configuration you may say atomic number because atomic number just resembles number of protons or number of electrons right right so in that manner this modern periodic table is framed based on the electronic configuration so electronic configuration is the main cause for the periodic properties of all the elements present in these columns as well as blocks right so along with that you may say all the elements are arranged in accordance with their atomic number rather than atomic mass atomic mass is called mandelieu atomic number is called henry mosley classification right so henry mosley classification is most acceptable nowadays it is the thing we are following and new elements are added in this manner there is a there is certain space still so here whatever new elements are invented all are going to be added in certain uh, certain groups and periods in accordance with their properties so there is no ambiguity with this modern periodic table we are very convenient with this kind of classification where electronic configuration plays the major role because all the chemical properties purely based on the valency electrons present in the given element so that is the strategy for the classification of all the elements based on uh, various criteria but finally electronic configuration is the modern periodic table foundation right so this is the chronology of the classification starting to till date so now uh, let us move on to let us move on to various kind of classifications which are provided by the scientists in accordance with this with our academy academic textbook right so robert boyle kind of classification just now we saw here robert boyle classification comes in the second place robert boyle in 1661 defined all the elements as the substances elements are considered as the substances that cannot be decomposed further those are the tiniest particles for the decomposition for their fragmentation may not be possible and uh, uh, for their simple substance by the physical and chemical change by applying physical means like a uh, heat temperature uh, lowering temperature otherwise uh, by applying the force uh, by means of any cause you can't change that and even by applying with any chemical like acid base and any oxidizing reducing agent 
so by means of physical and chemical means you are not able to decompose the element that is the tiniest one and that will not be transformed into any other kind so that kind of assumption was provided by the robert boyle in 1669 at this time about 13 elements are well known only 13 elements are known to us because uh, uh, in that 16th century microscope invention is also not yet done that's the reason why it's very difficult to classify it it's difficult to identify there is a continuous evaluation in the science right so that at the time only 13 elements are well known now we are uh, experiencing so many elements in our modern periodic table right they laid the foundation we are uh, moving we are framing uh, we are framing all the bricks and that foundation right so here robert boyle irish scientist discovered that substances are made up of atoms he called these atoms as a element the uh, the uh, what uh, terminology of element was provided by the scientist called robert boyle and uh, the substance made up of only one type of atom so if you are taking if you are taking any kind of a substance that is made up of only one type of for example i am taking coal what it is made up of it is made up of purely carbon only whatever wherever you are taking and uh, identifying its uh, composition you can find everywhere carbon only in such a manner the substance is made up of only one kind of atoms he assumed like that right and the boyle described the element as a primitive and simple substances these are the tiniest particles and the simplest particles so the terminology called element was given by this robert boyle this is a close to the modern definition an element is a substance that cannot be split up to a simpler substances by the chemical means so even now, uh, even now also it is not possible to break one atom into another uh, fragmentation so unless unless it is it is bombarded with a neutron and also like a electron so those are subatomic particles are present but it is not possible to fragment and they are not individually isolated so that is exactly matching with the today's phenomenon also predicted that compounds were made up of uh, made from and could be broken down into the elements okay so here substance is the kind of uh, kind of system where only one kind of elements are present and the compound is the system where more than one kind of elements also incorporated in that these are the kind of uh, blends blending of all the elements then uh, compounds are generated that is the assumption provided by this robert boyle so this uh, will be the ancient one now let us move on to second type of classification which is provided by anthony lavoisier Anthony Lavoisier considered as the father of modern chemistry towards the end of 18th century so here robert boyle belongs to 16th century and uh, lavoisier belongs to 18th century by the time of lavoisier in either 11 elements are added 13 are known and more 11 means 24 elements 24 elements are known to uh, at the time of anthony lavoisier by 1865 about 63 elements are known to us 1940 total 90 elements 91 elements are known natural source and any other 17 elements synthesized uh, synthesized in the laboratory uh, when you observe a block elements most of the a block elements are artificial means only so when you go with s block p block and d block where last series of elements mostly artificial and the radioactive in nature being a uh, as gradually uh, size of the nucleus increases they are becoming what uh, uh, unstable and they are becoming radioactive they are emitting the radiation right so here at, at the time at the time of lavoisier what happens in total 24 elements are well known later 1865 so many scientists worked on that and they invented 63 elements added some more elements there and there is a gradual evaluation by 1940 total 91 elements are well known a uh, 91 elements purely from the natural source from the nature like uh, wherever different sources like oceanic region terrestrial region and also atmosphere so even in our surrounding region we can experience so many elements in the air right major quantity will be on nitrogen later oxygen and carbon dioxide also present in that manner uh, in the natural source so many kind of elements are present so 91 found in the nature and more 17 elements uh, synthesized in the laboratory at the time of lavoisier oxygen nitrogen hydrogen phosphorus mercury zinc and sulfur these elements were added these are the uh, most important elements which are added at the time of anthony lavoisier but he is uh, regarded as a father of modern chemistry
Lavoisier. Anthony Lavoisier, 1790, complied list of known elements and 23 are well known to us. And this is about the classification made by this Anthony Lavoisier. Then uh, existence of a periodic table of elements by now. So when you consider the modern periodic table, uh, total 115 elements are well known. 115th element is regarded as the Muscovium with atomic number 115 and atomic mass is given by 288. This is the uh, last element. You can't say it is the last because we always, uh, we are not able to put the full stop. Uh, always there is a growing uh, research on this. So uh, science will always explore it so that uh, it is the karma only. And you can say as of now, we know only 115 element. That 115th element will be Muscovium. So uh, in the scientific, that means a periodic terms, periodic table terminology, that is uh, denoted as UUP, right? So U denotes un, U another un, un means one. Un is nothing but one and P is nothing but pentium. Pentium, uh, penta means what? Five, okay? So here, uh, uh, meth one, eth two, prop three, but four, penta five. So in this way, UUP, un, un means one, one, P means pentium five, un, un, Pentium. So this is the periodic table terminology of 115th element. Okay. So in the modern periodic table, the highest number of element is 115. Now classification of elements. So in the earlier classes, uh, you already learned about the classification based on their metallic properties. Some of the materials may be regarded as metals and some other materials may be non-metals in nature. Right. So on, uh, on which basis metals and non-metals got classified. So here the simplest examples are provided to us. Both belongs to a, a valuable materials in our daily life. One is a gold, that is a metal. And the second is a diamond, which is considered as a non-metal. Um, here aurum, our gold is made up of... Uh, so mostly metals having the tendency to lose the electrons always. Whenever you take a sodium, lithium, or aurum, or silver, whatever metal you are taking, all are having the tendency to lose the electrons. By that process, that is turned into a cationic species. But when you consider non-metal, they are having tendency to gain the electrons. Electron gaining tendency so that they are turned into a anionic species. Anion is nothing but negatively charged one. Metallic luster will be there. That means shining surface will be there. Any metal you can take. When you take aluminum, gold, silver, all are having luster tendency. Shiny surface will be there. Because of three-dimensional regular arrangement of atoms, they are luster in nature, shining in nature. And always uh, non-metals are regarded as a dull, colorless, and uh, some of exceptionally, some of the materials are exceptionally uh, what uh, lustry when you take diamond it is highly lustry in nature because uh, so many angles will be there that's the reason why it used to refract the light in so many dimensions because of that nature it having a lustry tendency okay. uh, all the metals are regarded as good conductors of electricity whereas non-metals are poor or non-conductors you can say insulators when you take um, copper rod and uh, uh, what we can say here uh, we are taking coal for example. So here copper rod conducts electricity in the nice manner, but a coal, it is an insulator, non-conductor of electricity. All metals are very strong in nature, malleable and ductile. Malleable and ductile in the sense you can make into thin sheets and wires. So the thickness, uh, when you take a gold, you may draw into very nanometer size also without any breaking. So in that extent, it will be exp uh, expanded. So that expansion is called malleability and ductility. Malleable in the sense thin wires, ductility in the sense thin sheets. But when you go with this, when you go with non-metals, when you apply the force, what happened? They completely decomposed. So deformation is possible. That is called a brittle tendency. When you take the plastic uh, plastic uh, box, for example. So if you expand without, without heating, if you heat, what happened? Because of elas elasticity, that will be expanded. We are not heating that. Just like that uh, solid, in the solid nature only, you are going to apply the force. Is it expanded? No, just it is a brittle one and easily broken. Deformation is possible. 
and uh, all the metals are having high melting and boiling point so in order to in order to convert that solid form into liquid and gaseous form you have to heat in the uh, furnaces separate heating devices are required which are called kilns or furnaces where high temperature is provided then only they got converted into a liquid state but when you take plastic it's very simple to melt that one and uh, by simple heating that is turned into a liquid state so here the melting point of uh, non metallic substances are extremely low most of this are mo mostly they are solids at room temperature you may take any metal any metal in the periodic table around 80 percentage of the elements in the periodic table are considered as metals only all the metals are solid in nature except one metal called mercury mercury is the liquid metal except liquid uh, except mercury remaining all the metals which are present in the periodic table are regarded as a solids in nature right often liquids or gases at room temperature so you uh, in case of non metals that may be liquids that may be gaseous in nature if you take chlorine that is a gas fluorine it is also gas hydrogen that is also gas so if you take uh, bromine that is a liquid non metal uh, one and only one liquid non metal will be the bromine itself and mostly non metals are gases only and even solids also available you may take coal diamond all these are the non metals but exist in solid state that means non metals may be liquids solids gases any kind of nature will be uh, adopted by them but solids uh, sorry metals are always considered as a solid in nature because highly regular three dimensional arrangement will be there in the metals exceptionally only mercury will be the no, uh, mercury will be the liquid metal so uh, all metals are sonorous in nature sonorous in the sense again lustry tendency will be there and uh, all non metals are non sonorous so this is about the classification already you done in your earlier classes metals versus non metals examples for the metals are sodium potassium so when sodium potassium are considered these are the first group elements in the periodic table these are called metals non metals examples are sulfur chlorine are non metals sulfur chlorine are non metals in nature so this is the classification so if you are going to classify metals and non metals it is not completely classified complete information is not given that's why you are facing some limitations with this kind of classification in the periodicity of the elements why because some of the elements may not be metals may not be non metals you can't categorize them into metals you can't categorize into non metal there is any there certain type of materials which are which are having exceptional properties with respect to these uh, kind of classification those are boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony and tellurium these six elements which are present in the periodic table these are uh, these are having exceptional or distinct properties when compared to metals and non metals they are not grouped into metals and non metals they are separate category you say these are metalloids metalloids in the sense having partial metallic nature partial non metallic nature means amphoteric behavior will be there means to some extent they are working like a metals some extent they are having also non metallic property those are said to be uh, those are said to be metalloids boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony tellurium these six elements in the periodic table are regarded as a metalloids they are having in between properties neither metals nor non metals having transitionary state right so these are the boundary line between metals and non metals okay so element of these types are regarded as metalloids or semi metals semi metal in the sense partial metallic nature will be there so this is the limitation with this metal non metal classification so we need more accurate classification so more accurate classification is needed now any other classification made by physical and chemical properties necessity for the necessity is the mother of invention right so if you need then it is required to invent something if it is re uh, originally required for us then we will uh, think about that one we will work on that one so that it, we will achieve that one in the similar manner we are so with this we have certain limitations so we are moving into any other kind of classification of elements based on physical and chemical properties so purely based on physical and chemical properties it is possible to categorize all the materials 
so modern periodic table purely laying on the chemical properties that is nothing but electronic configuration electronic configuration purely based on its uh, chemical properties only so this is the right kind of classification what we can say so physical properties are nothing but by heating by applying the force by uh, what we can say by uh, measuring the density all these comes under physical properties chemical properties are nothing but uh, oxidation reduction any kind of substitution addition all these are the part of chemical kind of properties so based on this physical and chemical properties also it is possible to categorize the all elements into various uh, various classifications now in either scientists who made a next step uh, into the classification of elements joseph louis prost joseph louis prost what he felt is in the 18th century only he also made some assumptions so he purely assumed that hydrogen is the fundamental material whatever uh, uh, materials or substances which are available in the universe all are made up of hydrogens only so that kind of assumption which is given by this joseph louis frost what he felt is frost said that hydrogen atom is the building material for all kind of elements so whatever the element you take some extent hydrogen will be there in that so uh, that kind of assumption he was made okay so due to uh, simply combination of number of hydrogen atoms he noted that atomic weights of the elements were given as a whole numbers and atomic weight of hydrogen was taken as one so uh, his theory is not the exactly scientific one but one and only one important point uh, what he assumed is that is exactly right uh, till now also he assumed that its atomic weight hydrogen atomic weight is considered as one only when you when you go with any kind of uh, experimentation till now also you will get its atomic weight as a one only that only the correlation with his theory uh, which invented in the 18th century but his assumption is entirely wrong it is not possible to locate hydrogen in all the compounds some of the compounds made up of hydrogen some other may not be containing hydrogen as the major quantity right but only the thing what he uh, what he invented that is exactly following till now also that when it will be atomic mass of hydrogen that is one this is only the element in the periodic table hydrogen only the element in the periodic table having atomic number atomic mass equal because it only contains one proton neutron will not be there one and only one element having absence of neutron is hydrogen only that's the reason why atomic number is number of protons atomic weight is proton plus neutrons here proton is one neutron is zero that's why again atomic mass also one right so that's the reason why here uh, atomic mass what he assumed is exactly correct but all the metals all the substances which ever present in the universe made up of hydrogen is the wrong statement which is given by this joseph louis prost in 18th century in any the some scientific exemption containing uh, classification started from dobernier so this is the uh, kind of uh, classification which purely based on the triad system just now we discussed he made all the elements into different clusters each cluster consists of three elements in that he is the german scientist john wongdang uh, dobernier in 1829 again he belongs to 18th century noted that there were a group of elements with the three elements so he made all the elements into uh, different groups each group consists of three elements that three element system was considered as a triad so dobernier triad that's why we will say dobernier triad so that dobernier triad was uh, having that triad system is having similar kind of uh, chemical properties whatever group is there with the three elements all three elements are resembling in their chemical properties <coughs> he try to give a relationship between properties of elements and their atomic weights he considered element are purely related with this at atomic weight of the element so that kind of relation he assumed at the time of this dobernier 1829 so this is the system called the dobernier triad he uh, prepared three dobernier triads the element lithium sodium potassium at the time these elements are well known atomic mass of lithium is 7 around so you can uh, accurately say 6.9 
sodium 23, potassium is 39. And uh, another triad will be calcium, strontium, barium. These three elements are said to be a triad, a bunch of uh, elements. Calcium with 40.1, strontium with 87.6, barium with 137.3. Chlorine element with 35.5, bromine with 79.9, iodine with 126.9. So these are the atomic weights. Based on their atomic weight, their properties are uh, regulated. So that kind of exemption, that kind of relation was given by this Dobernet triad. So these are a bunch of elements. These three elements are one triad. These three elements are second triad. These three elements are third triad. So this kind of exemption given by Dobernet law of triads. Okay. So here, Dobernet uh, stated that elements with the similar properties are taken into a triad system and arranged ascending order of their atomic weights. How we arranged 7 followed by 23 followed by 39.1. Calcium with 40 followed by 87 followed by 37. Chlorine with 35, 79, 120. That means increasing order of atomic weights are given. So arrangement in a certain systematic manner where we are increasing the atomic weight in the regular periodic manner. So all these three elements are having equal properties and increasing atomic weights are arranged in that cluster of elements, right? Ascending order of atomic, atomic weight is considered atomic weight of the middle element is the average of the atomic weight of the first and third element. This is an important uh, uh, property which is given by this Dobernet triad. When you take the average of first and third element, for example, if you take seven atomic number of lithium as seven, potassium as 40, seven plus 40, 47, uh, sorry, here 39 is there, 39 plus seven, uh, what we can say, 39 plus seven, it will be 46 by two, it will become 23. So average of these two is the exact mean of the central metal. So this is a assumption. What he made into triads for each and every triad, it was applicable. It was applicable. That is the important assumption given by this Dobernet triad. The average of first and third element is exact mean of the central metal, right? So this statistic is called a double Dobernet law of triad. Based on this, uh, here is the problem question was given to you. I'm not going to solve this one. This is the question which is uh, for practice. Can we, can we arrange the following elements uh, in accordance with the Dobernet triads? Sodium, silicon, chlorine, beryllium, magnesium, calcium. Based on their atomic mass. If atomic mass is known, how can we categorize? You can take first and the third element, take the mean of these two, and that should uh, exactly resemble with the central one. If it is so, then you can say these three are said to be a triad system. But sodium is in the cluster of lithium, sodium, potassium. We can't categorize into sodium, silicon, chlorine. I'm giving a hint, but uh, you have to solve this problem based on their atomic weight. The mean or average of first and third element should be the exact mean of the central element. So that is the assumption which is given by Dobernet triad. This is a question for uh, practice. And this is the activity which is given uh, in your textbook. What is the activity? So different triad systems were provided to us. One is lithium, sodium, potassium. These three elements of our, uh, one cluster. Lithium with seven, potassium with 39. What we have to do? You have to observe the following table. Elements can each row represent a triad. For this triad, this was given as empty. This arithmetic mean of the atomic weights are given as empty. If you take 7 plus 39, 7 plus 39 by 2, it will be 23. This exactly equals to the sodium. So whatever assumption provided by Dobernier exactly mapping with this one so that it was verified, law was verified. And the calcium was given with 40. Strontium to be detected. Barium 137. Let us go with average. 40 plus 137 by 2. It will be 88.5 uh, more and equal to 87.5 so that it is also verified. When you go with chlorine, 35.5, iodine, 127. 35.5 plus 127 by 2, it will become 81.25, almost resembling the central one so that it is also verified. 
when you go with sulfur selenium and tellurium sulfur with 32 tellurium with 125 32 plus 125 by 2 it will become 78.5 exactly mapping with the central one so that it is also verified you can say this is also the dobernet triad and um, one more is chromium 52 iron will be with a 56 When you take the average of these two, fifty-two plus fifty-six by two, it will be fifty-four. Almost is equal to central magnesium, manganese. So that all these A, B, C, D, E, all are said to be Dobernet triads because the mean of first and third element exactly equals to the central uh, element. So this is the assumption given by Dobernet triad, where the activity uh, we performed based on the uh, data which is provided in the activity, right? so our uh, dobernet triads what is the conclusion which we drawn from this uh, in the first row you will find that atomic weight of the sodium is equal to average of relative of lithium and uh, potassium so here sodium is exact mean of 7 plus 39 by 2 that will be 23 exactly equals to the central one that uh, we already done in the activity then can you establish the same relationship with the set of elements given in the remaining rows yes we already done the calculation that's why we make it as a done find average of all the weights of first and third element in each row and compare with the atomic weight of the middle element yes for all the elements we uh, took the uh, comparison and the average was taken and compared with the central element so that was verified all are said to be a dobernet triads in this right so this was completed by this activity now what is the conclusion for this dobernet attempts to give a clue for atomic weights could be a correlated with the properties of elements so atomic weight is the main criteria in order to classify the whole elements in uh, the periodic table that is the main assumption provided by this dobernet it made the chemist look at the element in terms of group of elements with a similar chemical and physical properties whenever new element introduced that uh, always that uh, scientist having tendency to keep into the different groups that kind of group assumption was given by this dobernet triads in that way cluster of elements were made into similar property elements were made into similar group this eventually led to the rigorous classification of elements and the modern periodic table of the elements based on this only based on this as a foundation further evaluation of this periodic table was done so this was very much helpful so in in uh, today's periodic table also uh, wherever properties are same there uh, all the elements are grouped into one particular group so same kind of assumption which is uh, given by this dobernet scientist but with a sh um, shorter one only three three elements were taken now we expanded into very large number of elements in the modern periodic table dobernet law of triads uh, have uh, facing with certain limitations all known elements at the time could not be arranged in the form of triads so here this is a table you can see all these are having arithmetic mean exactly equal to central element so that all are said to be a dobernet triads but apart from this whatever elements present they may not match with any certain kind of triads we are not able to locate all the elements into certain triads so such kind of uh, uh, classification uh, or into triad system is not possible not applicable for all the elements which are present which are invented at that time the law failed for uh, very low mass and very high mass elements if uh, if the if the element with the moderate that means in in between atomic mass then it is easily applicable if you go with hydrogen otherwise very huge molecule of a block in that case you are not able to make into certain triad systems only moderate element uh, atomic mass will be suitable for making into your uh, this triad system in case of fluorine chlorine bromine atomic weight of chlorine not exactly mean of arithmetic mean of this one but all these are framed in the uh, same group in a new modern periodic table fluorine chlorine bromine all belongs to same group but in accordance with dobernier if you go with the mean of first uh, chlorine and bromine you can't get the exact mean for the central chlorine so this uh, is not applicable for this kind of triad system being all these uh, placed in the same group you can't explain based on this triad system as the technique improved for measuring atomic masses accurately the law was enabled to remain strictly valid so for all kind of assumptions in order to explain all the properties this law is not able to 
withstand. So that's the reason why we have to move on to any the next theory, next advancement in the periodic properties evaluation. Right. So Dobernier law of triad. What is the relation about elements did Dobernier wants to establish? What kind of uh, relation he want to establish? I collected this answer from Topper. Thank you. When three elements are taken into order of their increasing atomic masses, then the average of a first and third element is equal to second element. In triad system, first and third element. So when we take the average of these two, in between element mass will be exactly equal. That kind of uh, relation you want to establish that is given by the Dobernier triad system. And any other question based on this Dobernier law of triads, the densities of calcium and barium. So here, despite of uh, atomic masses, we are regarding their atomic densities, right? So densities of calcium and barium, 1.55 and 3.51. Why we are taking calcium and barium? Because uh, let us move on to our previous session. Calcium, strontium, barium, these three regarded as a triad given by the Dobernier. So uh, despite of their atomic masses, we are going to regard their uh, density values. So calcium density will be 1.55 and the barium will be uh, 3.51. What we have to establish? For strontium, we have to establish. How can we? In the similar manner, how we established uh, based on this uh, average of first and third element in the same manner here also we can go with this one. I collected this answer from Brainly. Thank you for this. Here, calcium, strontium, barium, these three are regarded as a Dobernier triad. So it is uh, uh, it used to obey the Dobernier rule. What is the rule? First to third element mean should be exactly is equal to second element. So by Dobernier principle, in order to uh, collect the atomic weight of the strontium, atomic weight of calcium plus atomic weight of barium by two can be taken. In the same manner, you can expand this equation to even densities. The density of uh, calcium will be 1.55. Density of barium will be 3.51, 1.55 plus 3.51 by 2. When you take the average, what happens? 5.06 by 2, it will be 2.53. That is the exact density of the strontium. Law is verified for this question. Thank you. So by this, we completed Dobernier triads and some extended classification was done. And the continuation of this session is going to be discussed in the series number two. Thank you very much for your consistent listening. I hope this session will be helpful for your preparation. Thank you. Thank you one and all.